so many people want to know how I actually got HIV and I understand the curiosity it's been about 24 hours since the woman that raised me the girl that I've loved the most my grandmother passed away my grandmother and I or hold on the relationship that I personally had with my grandmother was strained by pain and her inability to talk about it and it wasn't until yesterday that i realized that she just wasn't able to talk about it so on this day i want to honor i want to honor the woman who raised me and the woman that i love i want to honor my grandmother by sharing my story and not keeping silent like she felt she was forced to do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you and I just ask that your will may be done over my life. I submit my will to your will. I ask that it is your words, Holy Spirit, leaving my lips by your grace and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So many people want to know how I actually got HIV and I understand the curiosity. However, I wasn't ready to talk about it. I didn't know how to talk about it because I still hadn't processed what actually happened to me. On the night of March 12th, let's actually back up a little bit. The day before I was supposed to go on a date, I wanted to get tested first. I don't know why. I just felt like I wanted to get tested first. That's what I wanted to do. So I went to the clinic and it took longer than expected. And so by the time that I was out of the clinic, my date was like that he couldn't do it because he wanted to have like an earlier dinner, an earlier night. So for us to just reschedule for the next day. And I said, okay. And I was also like an hour and a half late to dinner the next day anyway. We were scheduled for a Tuesday. And that's how I just knew it was fate. It was destiny. It was something that was meant to happen. It was God's will. Because had I got out to dinner that night, I wouldn't have met him. But who knows what would have happened. We go to dinner. At this point, I'm really trying not to drink. I explained to him that I'm not drinking any hard liquor, but I'm down to have wine. I've never really had wine before. I only did like tequila and Hennessy. And so I didn't realize that wine could get you as messed up, if not more. He got me a bottle of the finest wine that they had at Nobu, a bottle. I didn't recognize the red flags, trust me, I didn't. I thought he was just being generous. I guess everything is going okay. At this point, I'm still pretty violent when I get drunk. I'm, I wasn't a happy drunk for a very long time, especially towards men. My anger was always geared towards men for the most part as we're leaving the restaurant. I'm already in and out of consciousness, so I'm not sure what's actually happening or how far I walk to get to the hotel. I do know that there's a bar downstairs and like in the lobby and I get like a drink at the lobby as well maybe two it's embarrassing and I'm not even gonna get into it it's in my other video but I had started working out and I started taking pre-workout and just not it was not sitting well I'm like very lactose intolerant if you know you know it just did not sit well and he got mad <laughs> and so he kicks me out of the room. He's like, I can't deal with this. Like, this is not what I signed up for. He kicks me out of the hotel room and doesn't get me an Uber. I don't know if I even let him get me an Uber. Like, I really don't know. But it doesn't matter if I let him or not. He should have done it. Got me a cab, made sure that I got in it. I was very inebriated. I had no idea where I was. I begin to walk, I guess. And I'm not sure how far I walk. I don't know what happens, but I do know that I'm being followed. 
like I said, I am very violent when it comes to men, especially when I'm drunk. Apparently I was being recorded. And I say apparently because like I remember a little bit of, of that, but not the whole thing. This guy crosses the street and he has like a phone in my face. And I guess he's trying to like really catch me like out here, like slipping. I push his phone off. Like I, like he's, he's holding it like this and I like, push it down and it falls. He curses me out a little bit and then he gets it back up and he puts it in my face and then I spit on him. And then when I spit on him, he punched me in the face. So at that point, I'm on the floor, knocked out, like he knocked me out cold. The next thing I know, or the next thing I can remember, someone is picking me up. And at this point, there's a group of people, but someone is picking me up and he's like, yo, yo, are you okay? Are you good? I just remember his voice. I don't remember much of anything else, but it was Angel. That's not really his name, but that's what he introduced himself as. He picks me up from the ground and he's like, I'm like stumbling on my steps. He hands me my purse, I guess. I don't know, I don't know. I don't really don't remember that part of it. Like I said, he's with his friends. I later find out that these are not his friends. For the most part, these are just people that he does a pod or he used to do a podcast with. And by the way, the reason that I know that I was being filmed is because the guy who filmed me once King Face passed away and I started sharing my story on Instagram, he DM'd me and threatened to share this video if I didn't do an interview with him. <laughs> it's crazy. At this point, they're like, how do we get this girl home? The best thing would have been to call me an Uber or a Lyft, but I don't know if they wanted to spend money on me or if they were broke, I'm not sure. <laughs> didn't feel like I was worth spending a dollar on or $50 on an Uber or Lyft. So they decided that they were gonna be the ones to take me home or he decided that he was gonna be the one to take me home. And I see that he was the one that decided to take me home because while we were on our way home, like his friends were like suggesting to leave me on the side of the road. And King Face was like, nah, nah. Every single time he would ask me for my address, I would be like, I love you. Suck my. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I laugh about it now because, yo, like, what was wrong with me? Like, what the heck? What was wrong with me? I guess he drops off everyone that he needs to drop off. And then I'm in the car with him. I don't know what happens in the car. But I do know that he doesn't take me home. He didn't have a home to take me to anyway. We go to his place. And when I tell you that when we're entering his place, cause you had to go through like, it was like a side door. I don't know why we couldn't go through the front door. He was moving anyway. When I was taking my steps to go into that place, I felt shadows just like closing in on me as I walked through the valleys of the shadows of death. Everything got pitch black. And I don't mean in a way of like, blacking out maybe i was backing up consciousness but i'm telling you it felt like death itself was like had consumed me i thought i was going to die and i couldn't stop it i couldn't stop what was about to happen i enter and i don't remember much when i'm inside it smells like dog piss like i literally felt like a trap house like someone was like squatting there. But anyway, it smelled like mad dog piss. He had two dogs. It's basically all, all I remember. Like going past like I guess the living room and then into the room and I don't remember anything else after that. And I thought I was dead. But I wake up the next morning. My mind starts trying to put the pieces together. Like, am I dead? Am I okay? Because I felt, I felt off. I had a black eye. <laughs> Like my head hurt, my body hurt. And then I start like fluttering my eyes open and I don't recognize the room that I'm in. It's like red walls. I might as well have been in hell. I can't open my eyes. So I only was able to open one eye. I don't remember which one it was. And then that's when I start to cry because I start to kind of remember what happened the night before, even like what happened with my date. Like there was just so much like things to unpack and I was so embarrassed, was so scared 
because I didn't recognize where I was. And I'm like, who am I with? I was just holding myself like this as I, I wept silently. And I guess not that silently because Angel hears me. He comes behind me and he hugs me. He hugs me, he gives me a big embrace. And he's like, it's okay. I turn around and I see his face. For like a split second, I'm relieved. Cause I'm like, all right, like, he's kind of cute. I just go into his arms and I just start weeping. And he's like, you could have died. He's like, you really could have died. Things could have ended up so much worse for you. He says like, imagine if I wasn't there. Something worse could have happened to you. Thank goodness I was there. The manipulation started from the first second I gained consciousness. Once I grabbed my bearings a little bit, I realized that I didn't have any clothes on. And I'm like, did we have sex? And then his face just goes blank, like he's all ghost. And he was like, no, 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 we didn't have sex. And then I'm just like, Okay, like you, we don't have you don't have to lie to me. Like, fine, I, I realized that we had sex. I'm not wearing any clothes, and neither are you. Did you use protection with me? I need to know if you use protection because I just got tested yesterday. And then he's like, Well, of course we use protection. And I should have known then that he was a liar because, like, he first said that we hadn't had sex, and then he said that we did, and with a condom. I should have known. He was moving that day and he decided for me to like spend the day with him. Like I could have gone home, I guess. I was scared to go home too, like just to see my parents, and well, to see my mom and then to have to explain to her what happened to me. Not something that I was like super excited to do right away. And to see my grandmother as well because I knew she was gonna have a thousand questions. He tells me that he'll drop me off at home like a little bit later. For me to just run a few errands with him and then he'll drop me off. The few errands was literally the entire day. I spent the entire day with him. It was really weird because he goes inside the store and he grabs a ice cup and he's like, yo, you gotta put this on your face. Like it looks really, really bad. Then he picks up his best friend. I forget his name. Like Yayo something. He talks to Flip and he's like, yo, you still a shorty, like that's crazy. Yo, last night was crazy. I just like start crying like here and there, like just like thinking about my face, how I'm not gonna be able to go to work for like at the very least a week. I was annoyed and I was in pain. It hurt so bad. My head was pounding. As we would drive, he would grab my hand and just hold my hand. If you had never been around this person, just by like his videos, like if you see his videos, he has like a pretty strong personality. Like that was something that I noticed right away, that he was not soft. Like I felt like my will was bending towards, like that I had to submit towards. That's actually something that we talked about because I know a lot of you people on here be like, oh yeah, that I probably just slept with him because I knew who he was. I didn't know who he was. I was dancing in the club. I didn't care about no politics let alone a black Republican. And in fact, he told me there was a lot of people that hated him. And for every good reason, now that I know what I know, he thought that I was a setup. Like, bro, I don't even know you. Like, I don't even know who you are. Like, I'm King Face, and I'm like, Ugh. I don't know that man. Another thing that I wanna be very, very clear about that I wasn't in this whole storytelling is that I did not consent to sex. Part of the reason why I was scared to tell you guys or not ready to tell you guys is because I wasn't ready to admit to myself that I had been raped. I never consented to sex. And I even wonder what did sex feel like or look like at that moment? Was I even awake? Was I just a body just laying there? I didn't consent to this. So when people are like, oh, you should have gotten to like, man, shut up. Because I didn't say yes to this. Again, this is all for God's glory at the end of the day because look at me now. This was intended to be for God's glory. Because yes, this is the result of sin. But God calls all sinners. And he calls us by name. So through this, God will be glorified. I will speak.
speak and share the power of my testimony and the power of the grace and love of God. He finally drops me off at home. He calls me a few hours later and I didn't even know who it was. I pick up the phone and he's like, hey, I just want to make sure that you're okay. And I'm like, huh? Who's this? <laughs> Yo, it's like, it's, it's face, it's King face. And I'm like, oh. I had already forgotten about him. <laughs> For the few days after that, I was love bombed by him. Weeks after that, I was like entirely love, bo love bombed by him. After like two weeks of me knowing him, he told me that he loved me. He really played on the strings of my heart very well. My will submitted to his. I guess a part of me fell in love with him, but really I was, I don't know what it was. I was under a spell, I felt like, because I needed to leave him and I couldn't. I literally couldn't. That was the event of the night that I met the person that infected me with HIV. Did I get HIV that night? I'm not sure. I started getting symptoms about three and a half weeks later. Like, actually it's March, dude. Oh my gosh. I meet him six days from today, five years ago. I started getting sick March 29th, March 30th. I spent many nights with him after that and the months that followed subsequently. I felt responsible for him. I felt like maybe I could change him. Maybe I could open him up to like getting on medication, to getting help. But no, his mind was made up and I was just, I was just another pawn to him. It's still hard to really grasp that he never really cared about me because he played the part so good, so well. But the truth is, is that he never cared. He never cared. He just cared about himself. Feeling like a hero and a villain at the same time. I thought that I would feel like anger. I feel disgust mainly. There is nothing to forgive to that man. Because vengeance is not mine. It's of the Lord's. <laughs> there is much peace in my heart right now. I hope I honored my grandmother today. The truth will be told at some point. And even if it's not, God will always remember. Also, to the people in the comments that helped me get to this place, because that the first time I spoke about my HIV story, I had not yet processed that I was raped. I had not yet processed that I had sex with someone unwillingly, unconsenting, the night that I met the person that infected me with HIV. Yes. It was the result of sin, but I took on the full blame because it was something that I could control. It was a narrative that I could control much better than the narrative of saying I had no control. And I was a victim to this person. And that was something that my brain was not ready to accept. I keep on thinking of blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. I'm finally here at this place where I'm not afraid to say that King Face raped me and that I did not consent to sexual relations with him that night. I went into our relationship feeling like I owed him my life. So it was very complex, you see. He knew exactly, he knew exactly what he was doing. I wasn't the first person he'd done this to. I'm not saying about lack of consent, but what I am, well, what I am saying is that I'm not the first person that he's manipulated. I'm not the first person that he has deceived. And I wasn't the last, unfortunately. But, alas, he won't be doing that anymore. I hope you guys can hear me in this video. <clears throat> Can't really speak. Just been a lot of crying. I thank you for your support. I love you guys. Bye. Love you, Grandma. Mi abuelita bella. Maybe see each other again.